Now it's hard to relate to the Syrian crisis because we live so far away over here and we're like, no, I can't connect with that. But actually, if you think about it, we can. India also has a refugee crisis. Except here, our refugees are called tenants. <laughs> that is if they're lucky to find a place to live. And anyone who has ever tried to rent an apartment in India right now knows what I'm talking about, right guys? Because it is impossible to find a place to live here. I don't know what it is, but it's like the European Union and Indian landlords get some sort of sadistic pleasure by denying people a basic human right. <laughs> like Indian landlords are to tenants what headaches are to a guy who's trying to get laid. <laughs> huh? Hmm? It's impossible. Like, true story. I live in Bombay, right? Like, a couple of months ago, I was looking for a place to stay. I saw so many apartments, didn't like any of them. Finally found one I did like. I was about to make the down payment, and I then get told that the landlord will not give the flat to Muslims or Catholics. I'm thinking the same thing you are. What's wrong with Catholics? <laughs> Some of you are just scared to laugh at that joke, aren't you? Or you're like, Hasmat bumfad jayega. And don't get me wrong, right? As a Catholic, I have nothing against Muslims. I just got surprised I got clubbed with them. Because <laughs> not our thing, right? It's always been the Hindus and the Muslims, right? You guys have been best friends since 93, remember? The Catholics have been busy at home watching The Bold and the Beautiful. We... <laughs> You have no idea when this happened. Like, no, we're just like, I don't care who's killing who or who's burning who outside. Ridge and Brooke are getting married for the 69th time. <laughs> Every other day, you will hear a story about how people are being denied a place to live in this country just because they are Muslim, right? And that's screwed up, okay? No wonder we think that all they do is fly planes into buildings. We won't let them live in one. <laughs> huh? Maybe, I'm just saying, maybe Osama just wanted to rent a floor <laughs> in the World Trade Center, huh? And Bush was like, bro, I have a headache. No. <laughs> uh, but you know, a lot of people, if you speak to people about this, a lot of people uh, find it hard to understand the situation in Syria right now, and I don't blame them because it's very confusing, okay? It's very complicated. Like, you read up on it, it's very con uh, confusing because there's Assad, then there's the rebels, then there's uh, Hezbollah, and then there's ISIS, and they're all trying to kill each other, you know? It's very complicated. Like, I tried to write a smart political joke about the situation, and all I could come up with was, <laughs> Like, that's exactly how it is. What I'm thinking is, it shouldn't be hard to understand why people are fleeing, right? Especially the people in, in, in the European Union, they, which, uh, if, if you notice, a lot of countries are very anti-refugee right now. And I spoke to some of my friends who, who live there and asked them, why are you guys, you know, against these guys, you know, let them in, you know? They're like, listen, if we let them in, they will bring their culture and religion with them. And we don't want that. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. Because cultures, no matter how different, at some point blend in, right? Ask the Israelis and Palestinians. <laughs> or the Shiv Sena and North Indians. <laughs> huh? And religion, come on. There's no need to be afraid of their religion because their God is not real. <laughs> and neither is yours. <laughs> Now, the only thing that is real is the fact that four million people need a place to live peacefully and you're being a dick. Right? <laughs> huh? And if your God was real, he'd be so disappointed in you. Right? He'd look at you and go like, bro, how could you let these young children and their families drown at sea? Now, instead of Europe, they're dead and they're in heaven, and they've brought their culture and religion <laughs> with them. There are 33 million gods just from India. And the three of us, 
Do you know how difficult it is to find a cloud on rent? <laughs> Some of you are scared right now, right? I can just tell. You will see the next time on YouTube. But the whole attention to Syria came, uh, uh, you know, only a few months ago. And it was uh, because of two specific incidents. And it is sad that it took two incidents because the first incident involved a dead boy being washed up on the beach. You guys remember that? Yeah. yeah. And the second incident involved this Hungarian reporter who tripped this man and his son while they were crossing the border into Hungary. You guys remember that? Yes. And that's when the world got pissed off. That's when they snapped. I'm like, she's racist. She's a bigot. She should lose her job. And she lost her job. And I felt really bad because she was really hot. <laughs> but then I got thinking, you know, maybe, maybe she wasn't racist. Maybe she wasn't a bigot. Maybe she was just frustrated that nobody was paying enough attention to what was going on. You know, maybe she was just thinking, you know, oh my God, what is wrong with this world? Right? A boy just got washed up on the beach and nobody's doing anything about this. What can I do? to bring the world's attention to the fact that this is a serious problem. <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> huh? <laughs> and, don't, and don't feel bad for the man and his son because he got offered a job in Spain and the boy got to meet Cristiano Ronaldo. You guys know this, yes? Which is kind of poetic in a way, right? Because the reporter tackled him. Uh -huh. <laughs> then she got a red card and they got to go to Real Madrid. Yeah, it worked out well. Like how many of you have met Cristiano Ronaldo? Huh? None of you, right? Like think about it. Like, let's be honest between you and me. Let's be honest, right? If you knew it would help you meet Cristiano Ronaldo, <laughs> you'd let me kick a few members of your family. Come on. <laughs> you'd, you'd line them up, right? Like, <laughs> You line up oldest to the youngest. Not out of respect, but because the old people don't have much time. <laughs> you line them up. But here's what's happening, right? There's a very weird response to racism today. Right? Like earlier, whenever there was a racist incident, you could put your hand around the victim and go, hey, hum kale hai to kya hua? Dil wale hai. <laughs> hmm? But now whenever there's a racist incident, the victim gets rewarded massively. Right? Like this boy and his father, they got tripped, they got to meet Cristiano Ronaldo. Ahmed from America built a clock, teacher called it a bomb, he got to go to the White House. If this keeps happening, it's going to be very hard to convince people that racism is a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, like racism is important, it's necessary, right? Like how else would we know what language to abuse people in? <laughs> And in order for racism to succeed, there needs to be balance, okay? And because of all of this being so nice to the victims, I'm really scared for white people. <laughs> I'm really afraid for them because white people are going to be at home doing white things. <laughs> and then other people are going to show up and go, hey, is this a clock or a bomb? <laughs> clock or a bomb, huh? huh? Say it's a bomb, say it's a bomb. Yeah? What is my color? Say nigger, say nigger. Huh? Kalia bol, Kalia. Huh? Huh? Keep the cameras rolling. <laughs> but one of my, uh, one of my favorite comedians, Plato, <laughs> once said that only the dead will see the end of war. And that's such a funny and true thing because the Syrians are leaving their country thinking that they are going to move to a better place. But because of the way this world is, most of them are dying. But at least they're going to a better place. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you.